Hi guys, it's France. Welcome back again for week 83 of the Journal on Monday series. And the first layer I'm applying is embossing ink um, that I'm applying using a makeup sponge. I'm, I need a really soft sponge to do this. And then I'm going over it with pen pastel using a soft tool. Uh, before I went in with the pen pastel, I wiped my mask clean a bit to avoid having too much embossing ink on um, my soft tool. And now I'm rubbing the excess pen pastel in the mask so that I have as much pen pastel as I can through the mask. Cleaning it up very quickly, just using a dry cloth and then going back in to cover the rest of the spread. And I'm working on a Finnevar uh, Prima paper here, which is from the A4 paper pad. And again, I'm going back in with Pen Pastel and I'm blending um, all kinds of greens and a little bit of brown. Uh, I'm trying to go for something really organic here. And finishing up with the last piece Again, embossing ink, rubbing it um, off, and then pen pastel again. Once I'm done with this, before I can go over to the next step, I'll have to spray some fixative, which I did outside because it's not very healthy um, to do that inside. So I'm drying my embossing ink as well as the fixative so that everything stays neatly in place. Adding a bit of splatters using Colorex, and this one is already diluted with water, as it is in a spray bottle. Quickly drying it, <clears throat> and then I can finally start playing with the big winner of um, last week's poll on my blog, which is the glass bead gel. I'm applying it using a palette knife. And I'm applying it over a, a Finovar stencil. If you've never seen um, glass bead gel um, up close, the beads are very, very, very small. Now you could make the same at home. If you have tiny um, beads, you could mix them up with some um, um, gel medium and you would have the exact same thing. Of course, you have to clean up everything immediately and it takes quite some time to dry. So while it's drying, I'm keeping myself busy with um, getting some embellishments ready. And the first thing I'm doing is that I'm cutting up some grunge board using a Tim Holtz die. This is Paper Artsy Fresco Finish. This is the stone color. And if you would like to have details on all the products I use, they're all um, I have the complete list of ingredients on my blog as usual. So very quickly, very roughly applying it. This is just an undercoat. And once it is dry, I can apply the second layer, which is the crackle glaze. And the crackle glaze is um, thicker, so you have to apply it using a knife. So still keeping myself busy, I'm getting the background paper ready that I want to use. This is again a Finovar 7 Dot Studio paper. And I'm just going to trim some pieces to stack them on my uh, page. This is a second uh, piece of grunge board that I cut so that I could use it to measure while the first one is drying because the crackle glaze takes a bit of time to dry. Now that the bead gel is dry, I can start colorizing it and I'm doing so with pen pastel using a soft tool. And I'm mixing up quite uh, some colors on each little square. So first I'm applying orange a bit everywhere. After that I'm going back in with some green and some dark brown, some ochres. So I'm mixing up a lot of colors. If you check out the list of ingredients on my blog, you will see um, with the pen pastels that I used um, a lot of different colors to do this. So it takes um, some time to do this. This video is about 18 minutes long, but it took me almost two hours to get this spread done um, because I took quite some time doing this. 
you can play around with the texture of the bead shell with the pen pastels and in function of the color you're using you will have more or less accents um, from the beads which is very fun to play with and you can keep on going if you don't like what you see just take an eraser take it back off and you can go over it again so you can mix up um, a lot of colors even if it's a tiny um, surface so I'm keeping going back and back and back in adding some darker shades and as you can see, I'm not applying the dark brown all over the square. I'm just using it as a shade. Now that every little square is colorized, I decide I want to go in with some lighter colors in between the squares. And I could have done this um, before applying the bead gel, but by doing it this way, I'm also playing with um, shading of the squares because my soft tool will pick up some of the colors from the squares, especially that darker brown, and that will create some um, shading around the squares. Once I liked all the colors, I sprayed some fixative, which I did outside. Not very healthy to do that inside. And now I'm adding a wide uh, border on every little square using a Posca pen. And this will accentuate uh, the difference between the little squares of bead gel and the color in the background. Again, it takes some time to do it, but the result is worth it. I'm taking some fluid acrylic, adding some water to it to create a white wash. And then using a brush, I'm going to apply it over everything. But I'm taking even more water because I really want it to be a wash and not a layer of white on top of everything. And dabbing away the excess paint will make um, the bead gel pop up again. Once um, that I dried the whitewash, I can go back in and add some more little accents on the bead gel using the pen pastel. You can really keep going with this and as it is very relaxing and fun to do, well, it's hard to stop <laughs> when you're having fun, right? So back to my um, little embellishment and now that the crackle glaze is dry I can add the last layer which is the fresco finish again. So I'm mixing up two shades of green and applying it with a um, piece of cut and dry.
And to accentuate the distressed character of it, I'm going over it with a very light uh, sanding paper. And as it has a crackle glaze, well, it has some cracks, so it really looks heavily distressed in the end. Distressing it even more <laughs> with um, some distress ink, and this is just a vintage photo one, and I'm rubbing the excess ink back away. And it still doesn't look distressed enough to my liking, so I'm um, dabbing it in embossing ink. And now I can add some distress embossing powder. This is the vintage photo one. So the dis distress embossing has crystals in it, so you have to shake it before you apply it. And as I did apply too much embossing ink, I'm taking a part of the powder away using a dry brush. Putting the excess back in my jar, half of it next to it, and now I can melt um, the powder. Um, the thing with distress embossing ink is the, uh, embossing powder. Sorry, is that you cannot touch it before it has cooled down. Otherwise, you will um, take too much away. So I'm leaving it aside, and I'm going back to my pieces of paper uh, on which I added some sewing. Otherwise, I wouldn't be me. And then I can glue them all together. And then once it's cooled, I can take those loose crystals off um, my embossed piece of grunge board. I took a couple of home rusted washers. Again, I wouldn't be me if I didn't add a piece of rusted metal on my uh, spread. And I think they must start to believe that I have a garage or something at the do-it-yourself store because I keep buying um, all those different sizes of washers. And those yellow little pieces are um, 3D foam. I think it's from an IKEA piece of furniture or something like that. But the fun thing with this 3D foam is that it's very thin. So no, I don't throw anything away because at some point you might want to use it. And for this one, I needed a very thin 3D foam. So thank you, IKEA or whomever got me this. And then distressing uh, my background papers using Ingvild Balm's distressing tool. If you like a heavy distressed paper, this is really the thing you need. And now I can glue everything together. I'm doing this just using regular double-sided tape, but knowing that I will be cutting my spread in half, I have to make sure that the middle will stay in place as well. So I'm placing double-sided tape along the edges where I will be cutting. Cutting the spread in half using my paper trimmer was not my best idea because of the bead shell, so I had to go back in with scissors, which wasn't that easy to um, 
cut whatever didn't got cut by the paper trimmer. And now I can place those in my art channel. A fun feature of Pinavar's art channel is that you have white background paper or and craft background paper. So every week I get to choose if I want a white background or a craft one. And depending on what you have on your spread, you might prefer one or the other. So in this journal, my spreads are not um, always in the exact order that I made them because of that choice. So I'm just sticking everything um, down. Adding some more 3D foam underneath my paper so that it um, stays neatly in place. And when I came back to my spread, I decided to add this wording, which says evidence. And to me, this spread is evidence of fun. And it was from um, Seven Dot Studio little tag. Now to make it work with the rest, I'm just adding a tiny bit vintage photo distress ink without even re-inking my, um, my tool. I'm adding a cold porcelain little heart and a Finovar mechanical clock. Don't forget to check out my blog if you want to vote for the content of next week's Journal on Monday video content. If you would like to see a product or a technique featured, send me a little message. I will add it to the polls. And now that my um, spread is on its background, I see that I need to add some red accents on the other spread as well to make it work together. So I'm just adding some tiny pieces of washi tape. And I'm also going back in with some uh, white acrylic paint that I'm applying using my finger, just some light touches. That's it for today. I hope you liked today's video. See you back next week and have a happy one. Ta-da!